some classic pick me shit. Which by the way, if you're gonna hire a matchmaker, make for damn sure she's not a pick me. And what do I always say about following the rules of patriarchy? It's a waste of time. What? Because you can't win. The rules are designed for women to lose. So let's say she became this soft, appropriate woo-woo person that the matchmaker thinks she can help, right? How many soft, feminine, good wives have been cheated on? Oh. Abused? Being a good woman, according to the rules of patriarchy, does not protect you and does not guarantee you happiness or well-being. Single woman rejected by matchmaker. I worked with her last year. Nightmare. A maker of matches, an igniter of love. Yeah, you all that soppy modern <laughs> BS. <laughs> You're just jealous. The point, the point is, how do you get rejected by a matchmaker? Some people go to matchmakers because they haven't found love or they've been rejected by, by the people they seek love from. Hence, they seek a professional. This is drugs. But I mean, when a professional... <laughs> when a professional can't find your love, they reject you. They reject you. It's like, my God, woman, how tough are you? I was rejected by a matchmaker this wow. week. You no wouldn't way. be able to work with me. When wow. we met, I told her what I was looking for and told mm. her a lot about me. And mm. I tried to highlight some of my core qualities, including the fact that I'm very, very type A, organized. I like to be the leader. I told her the types of things that I like doing. I also told her I was looking for a man who was also a leader because I don't want to always be the leader, believe it or not. I told her I was looking for someone that was at or above the same income level as me, driven, who is ambitious, who is ready for a long-term relationship and ready to get married. She may have actually picked up on the fact that I'm a little high strung. I'm not like a stressed out or anxious person. I'm just high energy or type A. This is who I am. Or <laughs> qualities. I don't think this is gonna work out. And let's stop her there. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie. And last night I was, I was, I just had the best time. I, it popped up on my feed from a channel called Replicant Fish. And I've seen um, a couple of his videos before, but for some reason I went through a rabbit trail, rabbit hole, I guess, watching his videos. And uh, I was, it was so hilarious. Like I, I just could not contain myself. I think his edits are just just fascinating but the main point of this video is and i will link his original below uh to his channel but i i found this very interesting because this is a woman who was rejected by a matchmaker and she cannot understand why she thinks that in her mind like most women do today out in the dating market that they have a lot to offer that their personality is just you know maybe quirky or they have high standards but they still are worthy of love and that it would be easy for them to find somebody i mean what man wouldn't want a type a woman who is like this and so let's keep watching it and i also in this i have a couple of responses that i found on TikTok. interesting enough her original video she deleted from her TikTok, and i think because she got a lot of backlash from people when she was making this statement and making this video. And of course, like most women do today on TikTok, they go in there and do their rant about men and everything that is against them and how they feel and all of that. And they don't even think in their mind anyone would give pushback or or go against what they're saying because they're in an echo chamber of all <laughs> But they're in the echo chamber of women like them. And so for her, she thought nothing of it. But boy, oh boy, did she find out there is another side to the coin. And as more men are responding to these things and set the record straight and put a lot of these delusional women in their place, hopefully they will stop making these delusional rants and indoctrinating other women with this foolishness. A lot of information, a lot of information in a short amount of time. For some people, that would say, yo, that was a trauma dump. She unloaded a lot, like, yo, damn woman. Some would say, I can see why you're single. I mean, she's a modern woman, tough as nails. Bruh. I can see why a matchmaker rejected you, damn woman. That's a lot of stress. Or qualities. And man ain't even trying to date you. That's like, yo, whoa, whoa, easy woman, easy. Now, from a first introductory, well, introduction, well, just first glance, just 
the first time you're hearing her waffle, basically, the first time you're seeing and hearing this woman. Or qualities. What do you think? What do you think? As a man listening, <laughs> what, what do you think? <laughs> We're gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> Would you say she's somewhat tough and chewy as a woman? She wants a man who's a strong man because she's a strong woman. But does it work? Nope. Can that dynamic work in modern times? You know, the thing is, a lot of men say a lot of modern women lack femininity. Innate femininity. Fuck, 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 yeah. Ho, ho, ho. Yes, as a strong-willed modern woman. But again, in that process, a lot of women become too tough and chewy. From her perspective, she's very strong and demanding. What did she say? Type A? Very, very type A. A. <laughs> type A? <laughs> A. 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 Oh, wow. A. 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 That's some powerful stuff. Some type A type loving that this woman is, is you know, she's, that's, that's, that's her level, basically. A. A. But the simple fact is, and a simple point is. It's really tough. It's chewy. Any woman would have a wider variety of men to choose from if she was more of a feminine woman. Suck it. That's not even saying it to impose anything on women or even to be bad. It's just like, yo, as a man. Always the man's fault. Oh, shut up, woman. Go on. That's what men are attracted to by nature. It's not a social thing. It's natural, damn. Type A, this is who I am. And she was asking me, do I meditate? No. Do mm. I journal? No. Do anything woo and i said no i'm not even on the same planet as woo when talking about what i didn't like in a man i said i could never really be with a beta type man i now i find it interesting that she talks while she's type a she's a leader she's not into anything that's about feelings or growth you know she doesn't meditate she doesn't try to improve upon herself as a woman and she sees nothing wrong with this that who she is uh, everything about her, her good and her bad, which she mostly sees herself as good, even those negative traits, they spin it into something that's positive. And they never consider, what do men want? What are men attracted to? Who are the women that are getting a man? And what are their, their traits? What are, men, what are men in large saying they want? What have men wanted for all of history out of a woman, a woman that is that he's going to date and, and possibly marry. It's not a woman who acts like this, who sits up and feels entitled to having a, and feels entitled for men to want her regardless of her shortcomings. Of course, she has no problem saying what men's shortcomings are and rejecting them for that. And even these icks that are very popular that I'm gonna do a video about, when women just get the ick because he uh, he blew his nose or he was cold. So, oh, I, I can't take a man like that. So not only do they have these delusional standards, not only are they, uh, uh, their attitudes and their personalities are repellent to men. But on top of that, they are rejecting men for stupid things that they would say was misogyny if they were getting rejected for those same things. I mean, it is delusion across the board. But again, feminism, and that's my main point, feminism have breeded women like this, this mindset and this mentality. And that is ground zero for this dating market and modern women. With all of this that we're talking about in dating, this is just a symptom of the root cause. And that is this feminism that is about not women being equal with a man anymore. No, no, no. They, they, that's what they say. We would just want the rights and we want to be equal with men. No, it's about putting women above men. And no matter what a woman thinks, feels, uh, what she does, it's right because she's a woman. That's what feminism uh, teaches. And at anything a man feels or does that it goes against how she's personally feeling or what she thinks, well, then that man is misogynistic and bad. Men are bad and women are good just because they're born with a vagina. Mm. Specifically use the word doormat. I said, mm. I would chew them up and spit them out. And her response was, well, I married that type of man. She was saying that, you know, men really like a soft woman and I should try some of these vision board, journaling, meditating type of things. Okay. Okay. Interesting point. Interesting. I somewhat disagree with that matchmaker about dating a man that's a doormat. Bullshit. And I, whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy matchmaker. Easy. She has gone mad. Oh, that matchmaker's a bit off. I reject that matchmaker. I want to say, did the matchmaker actually say that? Did they actually say, well, I married that type of man. I married a beta man. What woman even says that? Especially with the, how this matchmaker ended up rejecting her. 
I doubt that she said those specific words, but this woman interpreted what she said as that's a beta man. But if you're an alpha woman, a lot of women are claiming I'm alpha, I'm alpha, I'm alpha. Well, guess what? You're going to attract a man who is beta, a man who's a cuckold, a man who does not have those strong masculine qualities that you actually are attracted to. Now you will have beta men who will pander to you and even embrace your feminist ideals and let you run all over them. But at the end of the day, you're not attracted to a man like that. And even this alpha feminist woman is recognizing it, but she still doesn't see the problem is with her and her delusional beliefs and desires. F that, but seriously, seriously, seriously. I get her point, but dating a man that's a doormat, that's completely the opposite direction. Whoa. No, that's, uh, that's, so, that, that's so completely off. But to some degree, I understand this woman's point. Very strong, modern. It's really tough, it's chewy. Iron box independent woman, she would. Whoa. She would, she very much would chew up, decimate and desecrate. Oh. Yeah, yeah. A softer, probably more feminine, weaker man, mm. a beta man in her perspective. Whoa. Which to some degree you can understand. I made a video a while back of a woman saying, we've had no choice as women, but to become tough and hard and chewy. Fucking men. <laughs> because society has made us tough and hard and chewy. Probably tastes like shit. <laughs> so some women say that they're built. Did you hear what he said? So women, they're, if they're tough and hard and chewy, <laughs> saying these alpha women are that it's not their fault that they have no agency over themselves they have even though it's their body their choice it's not their mind their choice they they th that society just made them so they have to be this way it's really not my fault guys i, I mean so anything wrong with her or there's perceived wrong again she has no culpability in this she's not guilty it is somebody else's fault always as to why she is the way she is and getting the results that she does this way you know and because of men as well obviously men can't leave men out because it's, it's always our fault always the man's fault so a lot of women say the current modern world has made them so tough and chewy so a softer man now oh, he's gonna get ran over Whoa. a doormat of a man please she won't just walk over that doormat of a man she'll crouch and piss on that mat of a man <laughs> disgusting probably even drop a dookie or two <laughs> <laughs> too much you get my point should mess up that doormat of a man and walk off leave him there and he may still love her yeah. so it's a very good point it's a very good point there are a lot of doormatish men nowadays i mean a lot of men are soft nowadays a lot of men you got soft hands boy very sassy they do look up to a woman who is more dominant than them which is a it's an interesting weird paradigm and shift of modern dating i do think it's a mommy thing i do think it's a mommy thing some men actually do want a strong tough chewy woman but this woman doesn't Whoa. she says she's too tough and chewy well she was even for her bloody matchmaker but yeah let's continue never gonna be that type of person she also said that she could sense I had some walls up, which of course I'm coming hmm. to meet a woman. And some men would say at 38 years old, she's already hit. <laughs> she's already hit the wall. Who I'm asking to find my future husband at the rate of several thousand dollars. I, Damn. of course, am gonna be here really just trying to interview you, my dear friend. Because paying for it as well. Damn, yeah, she's paying for it. Yeah. Yeah, pay for it, woman. Because I want to know if I'm going to get my money's worth with you. So, of course, I'm going to have some walls up. I also think mm. it's perfectly normal to have some walls up when you are meeting someone for the very first time. And who okay. also had not taken the time to do her own research on me by stalking me on the internet. What? what? She definitely didn't have time because she asked for my socials. No more than one hour. Okay, all right, all right. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, wait, no. She didn't stalk you on the internet. Stalking me on the internet. She's crazy. To get to know you probably. So you, so you see this? You haven't stalked me on the internet. Why? It's me, 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 me. Why didn't you have time an hour before our, our conversation to stalk me on the internet? What? What does that have to do with anything? When you go to a therapist, when you go to a doctor, when you go to get any services from a professional, are they sitting up and stalking you and to find out all about you? No, they want to know who you are from you. But look how delusional she is. She she wants even this matchmaker to pander to her so she doesn't have to do any work. She can come in there with her walls up and 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 and, and um having this this very combative attitude 
It like who goes with their walls up to somebody that you you know you need help from? Clearly, she recognizes that she has a problem with meeting the right man. Of course, it's just because the the men that are out here are not the good ones. So this matchmaker must have the good men that would be great for her. So she doesn't even she thinks that that it is the responsibility of this service professional to do that for her. And not only that, think about that. So. If she thinks looking up someone on Instagram and stalking them, she finds this to be normal behavior. Could that be a reason why the men that you are going after or that you wanna be with, uh, that they don't want you because you have this stalkerish nature that you see stalking and going through someone, all a person's entire history on their social media, that you, this is what you do to men? Obviously, this is what she does to men. And you can imagine the headaches and problems that come from that. So she doesn't want to get to know the man and who he is and actually talking to him and interacting with him. No, his social media account will tell her everything she needs to know about that man for her to make a decision. What an idiot. You think that's something bad on her? Let me just, let's move it out of her face. There we go. As I was saying, you expect this woman to have stalked you. By stalking me on the internet. To get information on you before she's even, you know, met you. When you'd be one of many clients, she probably wouldn't have the time to stalk all of her clients if that's what you expect. And furthermore, wouldn't you have had to provide a sort of a bio portfolio, a CV, a resume on you as a person looking for a man and what type of man you're looking for? Whoa. Wouldn't you, you have had to provide that information up hand, first of all, before she's even met you? Always the man's fault. This is a difficult woman. Spicy. This is a difficult, oh my God. This woman, you know what? I can see why the matchmaker rejected her. Whoa. This is a difficult woman. I'm not even saying it to be rude. Using her as an example to many women that matchmakers must have to reject. Do her own research on me by stalking me on the internet. Really? She definitely didn't have time because she asked for my socials no more than one hour before our meeting. So I asked her if she thought I would be ready for her services, her response, she essentially said that I am not ready for her type of services because I have too much work to do. My walls are too high. And I'm not ready for a long-term committed relationship. What? Can't help you. <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> because I have too much work to do. Wow, 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 wow. Imagine going to a matchmaker thinking you're ready with bated breath. Yeah, I'm sure she was ready. And the matchmaker told her, no, 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 woman, stop. Because I have too much work, work, work to do. You're not ready. You have work to do. Mm. Work, work, work to do. There are men I could possibly find, but you would ruin these men. Absolutely. <laughs> and just mess them up for other women that, you know, may actually, you know, want a decent man. Work, work, work to do. So no, 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 no. Woman, you have work to do. Interesting. Mm. <laughs> At the ripe age of 38, where I've been in <laughs> therapy for 10 plus years, she also said that I, she's too woo for me, which I can accept that. That's fine. However, I shouldn't need to be a woo type person woo. to be worthy of love. She also said that I need to soften wow. a little bit. Wow. And I'm then like a softer woman. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> work, work, work. She's, she's, she's too tough and chewy. Just like a woman. <laughs> you see, even, oh, go on, go on. She's too, even the matchmaker told her she's too tough and chewy <laughs> to find her a man. Wow. And she can't believe it. She, th she, the idea that something's wrong with her, the idea that she's too hard up to get a man, even a matchmaker whose job it is, like they make money through this. They, this is their, this is how they, they get their income. So they're going to want to take as many clients as they are. And for you to get rejected by a female matchmaker and her to tell you how you are tells you that you will, this woman will never be ready for a relationship. This woman will never get a relationship because she's not willing to listen. And she's almost 40 years old. This is how stubborn, how ignorant, and how it just delusional you see these women are. And we're going to finish watching what she has to say. And then I want to show you a response from a matchmaker and another woman who had something to say about it. Wow. So you see, it's not just me saying it, but even she could see the tough and chewiness 
of this iron boxed woman. That's <laughs> fucking ridiculous. You know, lovely woman. Work, work, work. But does her iron boxness make her less appealing? Like a softer woman. Essentially, I spent $350 to meet with this woman, have her tell me I am not worthy of love as I am. Damn, she said you're not worth $300. <laughs> You're not worth $300. I've been waiting for that clip to match up. But the fact that I need to change in order to be worthy of love and partnership. Wow. Which honestly, I think for that reason alone, she should have her matchmaking license taken away because we shouldn't be pushing on these narratives that people are not worthy as they are. No and way. essentially telling women that they, the type of woman they are isn't worthy of love. No that way. is a narrative that should not be given to anyone or it is or is she unqualified for the types of men that she wants mm. dangerous commentary and the fact that she said this to my face had some audacity no way well, we're celebrating my 38th birthday tonight yeah and we are gonna wash all of what she said aside i am with some wine yeah. some alcohol yeah get it you might even enjoy it i'm so excited and we're gonna believe that no matter the type of woman you are, love is out there for you. We are not gonna listen to this toxic narrative. So of course she thinks it's toxic because she has nothing to change. There's nothing wrong with her. Oh, my screen looks funny right now. But, and then she actually says that no matter what kind of woman you are, you're worthy of love. But do they think the same thing about men? No, they call them dusty broke. They, they, they have these high standards that men must jump through these hoops. and. If a man is not that way, well, he doesn't deserve a woman. He doesn't deserve love. So they are hypocrites. It's good for them, but not, it's good for them, but not good for men or vice versa. Let's get to the next part. Rejected by a matchmaker. I'm a matchmaker. And if you don't watch any more of this, I do want to address the ending of her video where she says this. I shouldn't need to be a woo type person to be worthy of love. Everybody is worthy of love. And unless I'm missing something, I don't think that's what this matchmaker said to you. What she said is that you were not ready to work with a matchmaker. And I will kind of explain some reasons why I feel um, as a professional matchmaker who's been doing this for 13 years, why she may have said that to you. I'm very, very type A organized. I like to be the leader. Based on the way that you describe yourself, I think this is probably the main reason that she decided not to work with you. And I say this as somebody who has worked with a lot of type A leader type women over the years um respectfully you're very difficult to work with from a matchmaking point of view because there is a level of having to hand over the reins and control of your love life to another individual and type a women are very very reluctant to do so which i get it like it's the most important decision of your life you don't want to get it wrong and it's hard to trust somebody else to make that decision for you however that is literally what you're doing when you're going to a matchmaker do anything woo and i said no so in fact i'm not even on the same planet as woo. When matchmaking is kind of woo woo at the end of the day because there are certain things that we just cannot explain and it comes down to our intuition the best matchmakers have very good intuition and are able to make those connections with people one of the first couples that i introduced and for months after they got married engaged she would come back to me and she would always say how did you know how did you know she really wanted and she was a nurse so she's a more science-minded person than myself um, she really wanted like concrete things that i could give her all i could say was i just knew i knew you two were perfect for each other and if you are somebody who doesn't have a belief in that kind of an explanation, matchmaking is going to be a hard leap for you. The rate of several thousand dollars, I, of course, am gonna be here really just trying to interview you, my dear friend, because I wanna know if I'm gonna get my money's worth with you. From the point of view of a service provider, the statement like getting my money's worth is very subjective and it's going to vary from person to person depending on their perception of what getting their money's worth is and their expectations. It's literally going to be impossible for a matchmaker to have a universal standard of what exactly getting your money's worth is because it's going to vary from person to person. For you, it might be finding your husband. Sounds like that's what you're going to her looking for. For another person, say they were widowed at 57 years old and they just want a companion for the rest of their life and it's not as equal to equate success or getting your money's worth by saying, well, okay, I found you your husband. Um, it's just different and that's why a good matchmaker is going to take the time to understand your goals and what you're hoping to find out. And then the other part of this is that yes, matchmaking and working with a matchmaker is an investment. You seemed upset that the matchmaker you spoke with didn't take the time to stalk you or social media. Uh, I did so. I would also like to say that I never do that for my clients. It feels like a weird invasion of privacy, but you have a public TikTok and I watch some of your videos that you invested in the process of egg retrieval to hopefully eventually have a child. That is a lot like matchmaking. You're investing in a service to hopefully have an end product, which is marriage, husband, 
kind of really the whole point of a matchmaking consultation is for the matchmaker and you to have a conversation in which you both learn a little bit about each other. She or he learns about who you are, what it is you're looking for and what your goals are. And the other part of that is they want to make sure that they have a good pool of matches for you and that it's going to be a good fit for them to work with you as well. We don't want to just take your money if we don't think that we can actually help you. And it sounds like this matchmaker did you a favor by saying, I don't think this is the right fit. And that's okay. It's just like any other relationship out there, friendships, romantic relationships, work partnerships, whatever it might be. You're not going to be for everybody and that's okay. You just need to find the right person who is. So this matchmaker laid it out from her position. Of course, she didn't call out the real delusion that this woman had, but it was a logical decision, which any person can see this. You're not a good person to work with. I don't want to just take your money and, and promise you something. And then I get a bad result and then that's going to hurt my business. So that actually shows me that's a matchmaker with integrity. But now, you know, even that is not enough for some women. This was a response from a woman who thinks that it was unfair how that woman was treated. It is absolutely delusional. I, I, I mean, honestly, but it is systematic of what it is. It is symptomatic of what is going on out here. Let me get this straight. Horoscopes, astrology, to woo. But somehow you're not woo enough to attract a man. This woman Sounds is attractive, right. she's accomplished, she contacts this matchmaker, she says, you know, here's what I'm looking for. And the matchmaker says, oh, I can see you have some walls up and I don't think you're ready to attract a man. This woman doesn't know her, she's not her therapist, but this sort of patronizing like, oh, well, you're too aggressive or you're not soft enough bullshit is just some classic pick me shit. Which, by the way, if you're going to hire a matchmaker, make for damn sure she's not a pick me. And what do I always say about following the rules of patriarchy? It's a waste of time. What? Because you can't win. The rules are designed for women to lose. So let's say she became this soft, appropriate woo-woo person that the matchmaker thinks she can help, right? How many soft, feminine, good wives have been cheated on? Oh. abused being a good woman according to the rules of patriarchy does not protect you and does not guarantee you happiness or well-being men who mistreat women will mistreat women regardless of what kind of women they are what the rules be softer be more feminine are built to keep us in check and to keep us so busy trying to conform with these rules and these beauty standards that we don't have time to do anything else like run our own businesses, go to college, vote. It's been what? proven time and time again that sacrificing yourself, your integrity, your autonomy for men is not worth it. What does work is saying, these are my standards. And if that person doesn't meet them, you move on. Simple as that. Hmm. And if you are exhausted by the dating world, which I admit lately I am, you are perfectly within your rights to tap out for a while, for forever, it's up to you. And the comment section on this video is a freaking trash heap. I mean, there are men and women, an alarming but not surprising amount of women who are like, yeah, you paid for all that advice and didn't follow it. Yeah, she's right. You definitely do need to soften up. Are you freaking kidding me? I'm glad she came out of it realizing how ridiculous the conversation was and I'm glad she's not going to try to conform to this woman's standards of what she should or should not be to attract the man she wants to attract. It's perfectly okay not to be attracted to her. No person expects everybody to be attracted to them. But to say, if only you were softer, thinner, blonder, whatever, in a world with a constantly <laughs> moving goalpost, is not only misogynistic, but it's just ridiculous. Actually though, the more women I see like this, the more I want to date again. The more women I see when I go on Canada Dating Coaches lives that are employing her methods and it's working very well for them, the more people I see who are setting a standard and then saying, if you don't meet the standard, bye bye is actually making me want to date again. 
what? I'm finally at a point in my life where I'm confident and I know that my standards are perfectly acceptable. And that once I know whoever I'm dating doesn't meet that standard, I need to go. Swipe left, block, delete, whatever. Yeah, so maybe 2024 might be the year that I add another partner. Who knows? Guys, this may be peak delusion. The fact that she tied this to the patriarchy, when she said you, you become softer, more blonder, more thinner, she is projecting what has come at her and why she's not getting results and turning it into, first of all, the woman didn't say that, but she's adding in her, her own trauma or her perceived trauma because she's been rejected by men over and over. This is a woman who honestly sees herself as a prize and say, you know what? I, I haven't dated, but with all of this patriarchy, pick me, uh, misogynistic things going on, I think I'm gonna go back into the dating world and, and, and show these men what they're, like, why are you going back into the dating world? You clearly don't want a man. You clearly don't value men. You cl clearly are delusional. The fact that you think you have these options out here, not only by you, by most people's standards, you have a niche attractiveness level. There are, you, you are not globally attractive to the vast majority of men. Could she attract a man? Sure. She can attract a man, but she is not what most men are looking for. So she's already limited by that. And then she has this type of mindset where she's throwing out pick me's and catering to a man. And she has this, this, this very liberal view of things. This woman has 0% chance of actually finding a man, but, but don't you guys worry. Don't you guys worry. She may be adding another partner into her life soon. Boys, you don't want to miss out on this prize in this catch. But this is a long video. If you stay to the end, thank you so much for it. Make sure you subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this foolishness. Again, the original video from Replicant Fish will be in the description box. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.